this week we are putting some finishing touches on the outside of our um, corner room box in preparation for doing our wiring. Stay tuned and see how we finish the outside of the box to get it ready. All right, so we are going to start by painting our door area, our fake door. And I am using, hopefully the camera can pick this up because I had to stir it. This is one of those paint samples that you get at the hardware store. Like Home Depot, Lowe's, um, paint stores. A lot of them have these. They're inexpensive, but they're house quality paint. It's okay if you go over a little onto your siding because we're going to paint that next, and then we're going to put a trim piece in that's going to cover the joint where our door and our siding meet. Now, if you don't have access to this kind of paint, you could use a, a good quality craft paint. Try to make sure you're not using a flat one. Try to get like a satin or a gloss. Otherwise, you're going to have to seal your paint with a clear finish, which is an added step. Now this I expect to take me two coats. So I'm going to do the first coat. I'm just going to very carefully paint. It's okay if we, like I said, it's okay if we go over. It's okay if we get paint down here on what will be our porch area. And this is just an off-white color. And I, just, I was going to go buy new paint for this project. And I said, I've got so many jars of paint and containers of paint. I am just going to use up some of what I've got. We'll be using this for some trim, around, not only around the door, but around the edges of the building too. Maybe. We'll see. I'm not sure where I'll use this. Okay, try not to let it pool, but try and coat everything. Get a good even first coat. I'm going to let this dry. When this is dry, I am going to off camera put on a second coat. And when that's dry, I'll come back and we'll start working on the siding. All right, now that I have the door painted with two coats of paint, we're going to move on to prepping the siding for painting. Um, we will come back after the siding is all done and put trim strips around the door, but we're not going to put those on until we get the siding painted. Before we paint the whole thing, we are going to put corners on to a corner here and then just an edging strip on the, the two edges. But before we glue a strip on there, I want to paint the very corner because after I glue the cap on it, I won't be able to get under there to paint in the underneath of that. So I was going to buy some paint, and then I realized I have this can of this really pretty blue left over from painting my office a few years ago. So I'm going to use this. It's just wall paint. And I'm only going to paint about this far on each corner, and I'll probably only do one coat. This is just so that we don't have the raw cardboard and the foam core down there under it. So I'm going to go along. I'm going to do this corner just the very edges. Not very far out because we're going to have, um, we're going to paint the cap on the edge with that. I'll do this side too so you can see how that looks. Try not to go around the edge. And I went through and I cut off any pieces of siding that were sticking way past the edge of the foam core. We're not going to use very much paint here. We're just going to paint just a little bit. There will be a strip that will cap the edge, the unfinished edges, but that will be one of the very last things we do. So that's all we need to do there. I am going to flip this around. I'm going to do the remaining edge, and when this paint's dry, we can start cutting our caps for our corner and our edge. All right, so while the paint dries on the corners, we're going to cut the strips, the three strips that are going to cover the ends of our walls. One of them is going to take advantage of the corner on a cereal box. So I've just got a cereal box here. 
Uh, I chose a cereal box because it's tall enough to do in one piece because I need a little over 11 inches. So I am going to turn this, make sure I have my cutting mat underneath. And I want to cut this so that it's just under a half inch, probably about three eighths of an inch. Be a good width for our corner kind of piece. I'm going to cut this. Be sure you have a cutting mat underneath the cardboard. And I can tell I need to replace the blade, pressure my blade on this knife. So now that I've got it almost cut through, I can actually go, go through here without the straight edge. Now, I've got this side. I'm going to leave this all in place and cut through the back layer too. And hopefully this will be the same width. Now we have a piece we are going to refold it so that it folds that way. And when our paint is dry, we can glue this on. I also need two strips that are 3 eighths of an inch wide to go on the other edges. So I'm going to get those cut off camera. And when the paint's dry, we'll glue these on. All right, so this is all painted and it's dry. So now we are going to take one of our, our um, straight strips. I'm going to cut a nice square bottom. We will be covering this edge up later. That will be a different process. So we're just going to glue this right here, right along here. And there's going to be a little pucker there. And just like in the front one, there's going to be a little bit of a, a spot where it doesn't match quite right. So I'm going to put some glue on here. I'm going to spread it with a toothpick. I want a nice, even coat of glue all the way up. And I'm not, I'm not trimming the top until I get it glued on, then I can trim it even with the top of the building. Now, line this up at the bottom with your siding and with the edge. And lay it down. And it's not going to have a lot of contact space. What you're going to do now, oops, we need to be very careful. Wipe my fingers off with a wet wipe. Now the trick, oh, excuse me, where did my voice go? The trick to doing this is we need to very carefully clamp this without it moving. Because we don't want this to move. And it moved again. Come on. So I'm going to leave it past the, the uh, craft stick there and so I can see what I'm doing. I want to make sure that everything is still lined up where I want it. Two clamps on. We don't want to clamp directly on this because that would make marks. See, I've got actually this area. Got to use this clamp. This won't make marks because it's got the longer piece. And there. Nope, that's going to pull it off. So we're not going to be able to do that. Let's see if we can just clamp the top and hopefully that will hold everything down. I think it will. It feels like it's staying down pretty well. Okay, so that 
that's a big clamp. I don't want the huge ones because they are too strong. They smoosh it too much. There we go. And you might have to stand here and hold this a bit. If you have some super glue, you might tuck a little bit of super glue under there. But that's that one. Now we need to do this. And this side, we're going to put our corner of our box. Now it's not quite tall enough, it's almost tall enough. We'll disguise this little bit that doesn't cover later. Now we're only putting glue on half of this. We're going to glue the other half down when we do the front. Let me get my toothpick. So don't get glue over on the, on the other side, only on the one side of the fold. And again, I've cut the bottom off nice and straight, or as straight as I could. right at the edge and this time we're gonna have to get a little creative because we are going to need to use things that we've got that will help to hold that down so I'm just gonna weight it down with a few things I have on my desk and when this glue is dry I'll come back we'll flip around and we'll do the two on the front side all right so we've got that glue set up enough that we can rotate this now so now we are going to this and what I did I did find my super glue I'm having to apply it with a um, uh, skewer stick but I did find it so I can get this on here Let's see if we can get just a little bit of super glue. Let's put on a few spots here. Oopsie. I really don't want to spill super glue all over, but Using both the super glue acts as a clamp for our other glue. Alright. Now we need to be very careful we don't stick our fingers into the glue. And then this side I'm going to do just the same as I did the other one on the back. So I'll get that on, I'll get it all dry, and when this glue is dry, we can go on to the next step. All right, so now we are going to just cut off our pieces that are sticking past the top. Um, and now we need to, let's look at one over here. I had forgotten last time I worked on this to glue this little piece that covers our foundation down. So we're going to start by getting some glue out. Get some glue out someplace out of my way. And do I have a tooth? I got part of a toothpick. So the first thing we're going to do is wrap this around. Go there. Now I'm going to cut an angle here. We'll trim this part off because we can, uh, we can do that after this is done. And I'm going to cut, I'm going to fold this over. Turn this like this. Put some more tacky glue up here that is not wanting to stay. Well, we'll get more glue on it here in a second and it will stay just fine. And for this, I'm going to use craft stick to spread my glue. I want to spread my glue out in a slightly bigger area than this is going to, co to cover. There we go. 
When the glue is dry, we'll cut off this flap, and then that will be done. So I'm going to let this dry, and then I think we can start painting the outside of our room box. All right, now that we've got this all glued on, and the glue is pretty much dry, it's fine to go ahead with, we are just going to paint. And we already painted underneath, so we're going to kind of paint up to there. Paint this trim. Try not to let any paint drip off the edges. And don't put on a really thick coat, because remember, we are painting cardboard. Your strips here. You don't want to saturate this with paint. It's better to uh, do several thin coats than a thick coat. And if it feels like you might be getting paint underneath that bottom row, so get this turned. I don't want to stick this in glue. I'm just going to take a piece of scratch paper. Fit this. That way I can paint right off the edge of my bottom and then pull that paper out. And I won't have, after I wipe that, I've got way too much paint there. That makes for a lot neater edge. So I'm going to use this paper to kind of block that all the way across. I am going to finish painting this. And I'll probably put at least two coats, possibly three coats on. When I get this side wall finished, we'll go around and we'll do start the front side together. All right, so the side is done. Now the front has a few more obstacles because we've got to work around the door and we don't get, want to get a bunch of paint on the porch either. So I'm going to start up here. We are going to be covering most of that, or probably all of that white trim. But we're just going to work around the door. It's okay if you get a little bit of paint on it. But just work up to it like that. Just push the brush in so you're not going slopping in. Try not to slop paint on the front of the door. When you get to the porch, let me turn this. So hopefully both of us can see this kind of on its side so the camera can see better. We are going to be covering the porch with something. I haven't decided what yet. So it's okay if we get a little bit of paint on the door frame because we will be putting a trim strip over that. So I am going to paint the front of our building when that's painted and dried, probably again two coats, then I'll come back and we'll move on to our next step. All right, now that we have the walls painted blue, we are going to trim around the door. And we're not going to glue this on until after it's painted. So I've cut this. This is just more of our cereal box or cracker box, whatever you've got. I've cut it a half inch wide and I've cut more than I need. I'm going to paint these, let them dry, and then once they are dry, then we will cut them to size, touch up the tips of the uh, top one, and uh, glue them on. So just probably need two or three coats of the trim color of paint. Uh, so when this is painted and dry, I will be back and we will install the trim around our door. All right, now we have three strips that are painted and dry. And I'm going to use my craft knife to kind of just scrape off any extra paint along the edges here. Now, what we need to do is we need to cut this so it comes right to here. I'm going to mark it. Right like that. We want it even with the top of that one. We're not going to worry about there being no uh, paint on the top of that one. That will take care of, that will be covered. And we do have a slight bow in our wall. We'll take care of that later when we do our wallpaper on the inside. I'll tell you how to adjust that. So we are going to get some glue. We'll get that one glued down first so I know where it goes. Okay. 
most of our glue wants to be on that side because we're go right over that strip we put on before. I'm going to kind of line it up. And there we go. Now, this one. I'm go right here. Use my knife again. Mark across so I know exactly where to cut. I could cut it with my knife, but I don't have my cutting pad set up. So it's just easier to use my scissors because they're right there. I'm going to same thing. I really should be setting my glue on its side, not uh, standing up down there. Now once again, spread that glue out. And line it up right like that. Now we need a straight line here. That's now this one. Here. It has to be lined up exactly with this because that's not completely straight. Let's make sure we're cut straight there. Then over here, once again, it feels like it's just a little bit longer, like a hair. There. You might have to do a little fussing to make sure that everything lines up just right. Now, this needs to be set off to the side because we need to cut this. And now these ends are going to show. So I have my brush. I'm using the trick that I learned uh, from an interview with Tim Holtz where I wrapped my paintbrush up in a wet wipe. That way I don't have to wash it between every coat of paint. Just do those ends, making sure there's no overlap on the front, the big pools, and let that dry. When that's dry, I'll come back and we will glue it on to the front of our dollhouse our room box and in the meantime I'm gonna go wash this brush now because I'm done with it for today all right now if my son does not interrupt us again we are going to yeah I just I started recording and he started talking so we are going to glue this down the paint is all dry and we are not going to put a doorknob on today because I am going to do a doorknob for a trash to treasure in the next, I don't know, couple of weeks. I haven't decided when. Sometime before the project is done, we will do a doorknob for a trash to treasure project. But this just needs to dry now. Line it up. Hopefully I didn't cut that too short. And this is as far as we're going today. Next week we'll start our electrification, our electrifying project. And in two weeks, you'll see this again when we start wiring it. So I hope you enjoyed today's project. Uh, be sure and check the blog post for any measurements or anything. Oh, and if yours is trying to pop up like mine is, just set something not too heavy because remember, this is just foam core. Just set something on top of it. Um, and that way, it will the glue will hold it down once it starts to dry. But that's our project for today. Be sure and check the blog post for photos and dimensions of anything that I cut today, and I will talk to you later. Bye.